But to be able to do this, you have to have done all of the foundation moves that I that we spoke about earlier on. And this you can't start with painting grass. You have to start with painting the underlying structure of the foreground in terms of value and temperature and tone. And then ultimately you come in with these marks and it allows you to uh, have what's underneath come through also. Right on top I'm coming with some lighter marks and the trick is you, you get the mark down so what's underneath pokes through and you can see it right now since we're so close up. And then I'm going to take my brush and sort of press down almost like a mono print to build up a real intricate texture that carries us back through here. So I want to, I want to create a segue, um, um, marks that offer us a segue between the very front of the foreground and the back of the foreground right in here. So just by pressing down, it gives us a nice transition. This takes time. You have to develop a sensitivity for various types of painted marks. You have to be able to recognize the type of stroke and the type of texture that has an aesthetic dimension to it that looks like it somehow parallels what nature offers us. Alright, this is working out pretty well. well. We're obviously looking at the photographic reference once again. And what I want to do here, we, we just built up the uh, front of the foreground. Now what I want to do is create a connection between the yellow mark here and the light that we were suggesting in the water and create this crescendo of light right here in front of the uh, tree line. So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did in the front and use straight yellow on the brush to build up some texture to suggest the, the light hitting the yellow grass back here and hopefully that will help us make this space even more deep and get, add to the depth. So I'm going to dip down with the same brush. I don't care if anything's left on it. Actually some of what I was using in the foreground is still on this old dilapidated number eight bristle brush. I'm going to mix up Get the paint. I haven't dipped this brush into linseed oil either. I'm using it rather thick and trying to get the paint sort of set up on the end of the bristles so I'm able to print down with the, uh, the just the very fine end of the uh, bristles. So these are real delicate marks. We're able to make a, a beautiful transition between the light that we suggested back here and the idea of the light breaking over the tree line. So you can actually press down on this tree line a little bit to make a few marks. And then coming right down onto the grass. And this this uh, adds to the sense of movement through flickering light and temperature and also just to the overall sense of harmony color harmony because we're allowing the color to connect areas together. And notice how I'm using the brush. I'm just pressing down. You really do have to have the right brush. And look for your oldest totally worn out bristle brush that's just where the hairs of the bristle brush are really sort of have hardened from a lot of abuse. And that brush will allow you to do what I'm doing right now. And then if it's, remember what's underneath is really, uh, it was real thin. So over the last 40 minutes, the paint has started to set up and it's not mixing with what's underneath that much. I mean, it does a little bit, which allows the paint to sort of meld together.
come down here, just pull right into the water a little bit. So just this, this is like a scumbled glaze, it sort of lowers the value, pushes the mountain back, and then there's still some areas of violet coming through. Then what I'm going to do is go back to my uh, the brush I was using for the sky and do like an overpaint so that edge becomes a little bit softer. There we go. I don't, I don't want that to be too linear right there. So it's that back and forth movement, painting a little bit of the sky and then a little bit of the mountain to get the perfect edge. And then go back. See how some of these little bristle marks came on top? We're going to paint back on top once again and those will allow the edge to sort of shimmer. Beautiful. And then we could even take the brush that we were using for the sky and bring a little bit of that tone right on top, almost like if the sky is coming down in front, and then go back with a brush to sort of tone it in. Come across. Well, I hope today's demonstration uh, was of benefit to you. We covered a lot of ground. First of all, we covered the idea of setting up the uh, foundation of the landscape with a foreground, middle ground, and background, putting together those basic underlying shapes, dealing with value and contrasting temperatures, and how to move things around. Then we got into how to use a variety of brushes with various tonalities to build up intricate textures to sort of suggest what Mother Nature has to offer us. So this does take practice to uh, be able to work in your studio from an, a, a painting that you created outside. I uh, recommend that you paint for years outdoors uh, from life as much as possible and then uh, take chances. Bring those paintings into your studio and experiment with uh, larger formats. Until the next time, enjoy your painting, take chances, and uh, keep practicing. Goodbye.